Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have 2x plus 6 at the base and the exponent is x squared minus 9. So we have 2x plus 6 to the power x squared minus 9 equals 1. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'm also going to show you a graph at the end which has some interesting implications. So first of all, when you see a problem like this and suppose we're looking for real solutions first. So you have an equation like this, b to the power a equals 1. b is the base, a is the exponent. And a and b are real numbers. Okay. So we, have, we end up with uh, three cases. The first case is a equals 0 and b does not equal 0. So let me write and so you know that they have to be satisfied at the same time. It's not or, it's and. Okay. That's the first case. The second case, obviously, this the first case gives us any non-zero number to the zero power is equal to one. No matter how large or how small or whether a number is positive or negative, when you raise it to the zero power, the answer is always one, as long as the base is not equal to zero. Because zero to the power zero is an indeterminate form that can be solved, hopefully, by uh, limits. So. That's the first case. Second case is kind of like the trivial case, sort of. b is equal to 1, so when the base is 1, no matter what the exponent is, it's always, always going to be 1. But of course, we're talking about real numbers again, not complex numbers in this sense. So we can say b equals 1 and a is just a real number. Now, I had to emphasize that a and b are real numbers here because if that's not the case, then it kind of takes us back to uh, one of the previous problems that we did, and I can also include the link down uh, below or, or here. When you get something like 1 to the power x is equal to negative 1, notice that we said for reals, when the base is 1, the result should always be 1. So a lot of people were surprised when they saw this. How could a power of 1 be negative 1? So this is a different story. You can go on and watch the video and... You know, this is a totally a different uh, thing. So that's why we have to specify that, you know, A and B are real numbers. We're also going to look at the case where A and B could be complex numbers and see where that goes. The third case scenario here is going to be what? You can guess at this point. And if you said B is equal to negative 1 and A is an even integer, then you got it right. Because if you think about it, we have negative 1 to the power 2n, it's always 1. Again, we're talking about real numbers here. Okay? So those are the three cases. We're going to go ahead and take a look at each case, and then we will just quickly, briefly glance at the complex options, and then I'll show you the graph. Okay? Cool. Let's start with the first case. So the first case gives us a equals 0. So what, what is my a? a is the exponent. So let's write our equation one more time so we can get uh, that visibility. 2x plus 6 to the power x squared minus 9 equals 1. And I probably want to move it over here so it's not cut off because I don't like it that way. Uh oh, I don't know what happened. So let's go ahead and move this guy over here. This should be good. Okay. Let's erase this and start over. Okay, so this is my equation. And the first case is x squared minus 9 equals 0 and 2x plus 6 does not equal 0. Now, it's important to use and here because we have to look at the intersection. So this gives us two solutions. x, is, uh, x squared equals 9 gives us x is either 3 or negative 3. Notice that we're using or here because obviously those two cannot be happening at the same time, right? So that's the first part uh, of for the first solution, or the first part. Okay, 1a. So now the, we, we don't want this to be 0. Obviously, when x is negative 3, this is going to be 0. So you don't want x to be negative 3. And of course, there's an and here. So now, if you look at this, you, don't, you want x to be either 3 or negative 3, but at the same time, you don't want x to be negative 3, which kind of cancels out the second option. And or means if one of them works, we're good. So x equals 3 is going to be the only solution that comes from here. When we look at the graph, please consider these cases because that's going to make much more sense. So case number two, 
we said for case number two, remember b is equal to one. So when the base is one, we don't care about the exponent. So the base is two x plus six here. So two x plus six equals one and nobody cares. So you don't even have to worry about the x because if this is the case, if two x plus one, six is equal to one, x squared minus nine is definitely going to be a real number because x is a real number. Make sense? So from here we get the following, subtract six, two x equals negative five, divide by two, x equals negative five halves. And that solution is definitely acceptable. So that's our second solution. We can kind of cross it out. We don't care about x not being negative three. So far we got two solutions, three and negative five halves. Again, consider these when looking at the graph. The third case scenario is when the base is negative one. So if two x plus six is equal to negative one, from here we're going to get, but also we had to have a even exponent. So and, did we write it? Uh, yes, yes we did. So we want and, let's write it in capitals, the exponent to be even. So we want x squared minus nine to be even. And what is that supposed to mean? It just means that, it just means that uh, if x squared minus nine is even, that means x squared is odd, which means x is actually odd here as long as x is an integer if x is not an integer and x squared is an integer we're still good because we don't really care about x so we basically want x squared to be odd let's put it that way the reason why i uh, make a distinction is because if x happens to be square root of three it is going to work because uh, square root of three squared is odd but square root of three isn't because it's not even an integer make sense Okay, cool. But when we solve for the equation, we get x equals negative 7 halves. And if you square this number, x, you're going to get x squared equals 49 over 4. And do you think that is an odd number? So that's something interesting to think about. So let's go ahead and plug it in because this is a really interesting case. Okay. So now um, I'm going to replace x with, obviously, negative seven halves, which is gonna give us a negative one at the bottom or the, at the base. And the exponent is gonna be x squared minus nine. So it's like 49 over four minus nine. Let's simplify this. And that's gonna be 49 minus uh, 36. That's gonna be 13 over four. So my, you might be a little uh, confused with this, but don't worry about it. Uh, we're going to be looking at the, so the exponent is odd. So we can kind of write this as negative one to the power 13 and then the fourth root of that. But that's gonna give us what? Negative one to the power 13 is negative one and this is gonna give us the fourth root of negative one. Obviously, this doesn't have any real solutions. Now what happens if we do it the other way around? Look at the fourth root of negative one. Obviously, that's not gonna be a real number. And then whatever that number is, you can raise it to the 13th power. And it shouldn't matter in which order you do these things, but unfortunately, this is not going to be a real number. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll finish up. All righty. So here's our graph. As you can see here, as you can see here, we have negative five halves, comma one. So x equals negative five halves is the solution. Uh oh. Okay, we're just going to erase those extra lines. I don't know why they pop up. And then uh, we have the three, because three makes this zero, remember? And it doesn't make it um, the, the base zero. And negative seven halves, obviously, is not a good choice, even though I marked it. I just wanted to show you. It's not even on the graph. It's not gonna work because for the um, reasons that I mentioned before. And negative three comma one is also mentioned here. Why? Because negative three makes the x base zero. And when you have a zero at the base, you can never get one. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.